in this problem, we're given a velocity vector for some particle moving in two dimensions. And that's given in the standard I hat J hat notation. We're told you can assume all the coefficients carry the correct units on that so that V comes out in meters per second. And in part A, we're given an initial position vector for this object. And in fact, we start it at the origin. So R of zero is equal to zero. And what we're trying to get in part A is the position as a function of time in general. So the starting point here is to realize that the I hat piece of the velocity vector is giving you the time derivative of the X coordinate as a function of time. So X prime is that one minus two T. Then all we have to do is find the antiderivative of that and we'll have the X position as a function of time. So we find the antiderivative and that's T minus T squared, but that comes with an arbitrary constant plus C. And that's where our initial condition comes in. If our initial position is the zero vector, that means the initial X coordinate is zero. So X of zero is zero, but if I plug in T equals zero here, I get zero minus zero squared plus C. And we find out that C is equal to zero. So we can just forget about that. And now I have my X coordinate as a function of time given by T minus T squared. We do a similar thing for the Y coordinate. The J hat part of our velocity vector is actually Y prime of T. That's the time derivative of the Y coordinate. We're told that's equal to T squared. We quickly guess the antiderivative of that, which is one third T cubed plus C. And again, it's really nice when something starts at the origin because we like zeros and Y of zero is a one third zero cubed, which is zero plus C. And we're told Y of zero is equal to zero. And that means C is zero. So we can forget about it. And now I have my Y coordinate as a function of time. It's just one third T cubed. Finally, we can write down our position vector as a function of time. And in general, that's an X of T I hat plus a Y of T J hat and plugging in our X and Y, we get T minus T squared I hat plus a one third T cubed J hat. In part B, we're asked to compute the average velocity vector from T equals one second to T equals two seconds. And so the starting point here is to remember that the average velocity is given by a change in the position vector divided by the change in time. So the change in the position vector is going to be the position at t equals two minus the position at t equals one. And the change in time here is two seconds minus one second. Now we just have to plug in t equals two into our position vector. And when I do that, I get a two minus two squared for the I hat piece. That's two minus four or negative two. And when I look at the Y component, that's one third times two cubed or eight thirds. So I have a plus eight thirds J hat. So there's R of two. And then R of one, when I plug one in for the I hat component, I get zero. When I plug one in for T in the J hat component, I get one third. So R of one is just a one third J hat and I'm subtracting that from R of two. And then the denominator of course is just one. So I get an average velocity vector of negative two I hat plus seven thirds J hat. So there it is in component form, but I want to get the polar form for this. To get the polar form, we draw a triangle. So I have a leftward pointing component of negative two I hat. So that leftward vector has a magnitude of two. I have an upward pointing component with a magnitude of seven thirds. There's my average velocity vector. And we're going to label an angle with respect to the horizontal here in order to indicate the direction. So the magnitude of that average velocity vector is given by the Pythagorean theorem. And I get a square root of two squared plus seven thirds squared. And to three sig figs, I get a magnitude of 3.07 meters per second. And then the angle theta is the angle whose tangent is seven thirds over two. And to three sig figs, I get 49.4 degrees. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, Check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.